I know you all have been wondering how I achieved that my super amazing red velvet cheesecake. So today I have decided to teach you the step-by-step -step guide on how I achieve it. So come along with me. First of all, my name is Femi Shade and I am the creative director behind the brand called Femi's Dessert Veal. As always, I'd always urge you to keep subscribing to my YouTube channel and follow this channel to get very interesting educative videos just as the one we are going to be having today. So today's class is going to be centered on two highly coveted recipes of mine, which is the red velvet cake, oil-based red velvet cake recipe, as well as my New York style cheesecake recipe. Now I'm going to be teaching all of this in this one video and I'll be showing you how I layer this to actually make that amazing red velvet cheesecake you all always comment that you like. So we're going to be going straight into the video now and we're going to be learning how to bake up the best red velvet cake recipe ever. This is an oil-based recipe and I have everything all pre-measured. This recipe I'm going to be giving you is going to be serving two 8 inches square shaped pans conveniently. You can decide to have the recipe or decide to keep to this measurement. I will be dropping this recipe and the measurements in the description box for easy access and I'd also urge you to not forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so that we can continue to build a thriving network here where we can learn and unlearn together so we'll go straight into the business of the day now and that is for me to just list out the ingredients not with their measurements you get it in the description box like i said earlier so we're going to be working with granulated sugar here we're going to be working with room temperature eggs here we're going to be working with buttermilk i already i don't i don't buy store-bought buttermilk so i always have my substitute done basically by adding white vinegar into um evaporated milk i've said that over and over in my video so you can always check other videos for reference sake and we're going to be using vegetable oil in this video i'm not talking about flavored oil just direct vegetable oil and then definitely i have a secret ingredient that i always don't miss out and that is the lightly brewed plain coffee already prepared here and of course we have the red velvet color red velvet powder we have there's this special recipe I have here, which is basically some color and some water and some other ingredients. And it's, it always serves as the base for the red velvet cake to give it that good color and to ensure that it doesn't have brown patches once it's well baked together. Additional white vinegar and then of course the vanilla flavor. We're working with baking soda, baking powder and then salt. Remember it's an oil based recipe so there's going to be room for salt to give it the necessary taste it needs so at this point and of course i'm going to be working with all purple flour already perceived and ready so the next thing i'm going to be doing now is just to throw in every other dry ingredients into into the flour i just added the baking powder i'm adding the baking soda i'm adding the salt you know particular order and then i just simply sift this through in all right to get rid of any sort of lumps like this and throw that away and then what i just do is give it a quick whisk to make sure it's all well incorporated before i add it into the butter this recipe is very okay to use with a stand mixer but for the purpose of this class i'm going to be teaching you with my hand mixer because i realized that a lot of people will be able to work with a hand mixer even if they do not have a stand mixer yet so i'm working with a whole lot of people here so we are working with the hand mixer now it's going to give you the same result as it would if you're working with a sand mixer and note that this particular recipe doesn't need you to proceed or rather doesn't need you to sift out the batter once done the rest are sure that once you follow the steps according to how i teach it you wouldn't have any lumps that you'd be scared of having left as a deposit in your cake batter because i personally feel like when you sift out the batter it aerates it and some components might reduce and i personally want everything in their original form so it's a basic process of going in with the wet ingredients first and then going in with the um, dry ingredients at the end i don't alternate milk and the next thing i'm going to be doing now guys is i'll be adding the powder the red velvet powder into the buttermilk and the reason for that is i could choose to add it to the flour but i'd add it into the milk and that is because i want it to be activated with the liquid so that at the point when i'm pouring it in into the butter the color is already getting well defined as against if i add a 
add it to the um, dry ingredients. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take a few minutes to get this well combined in to make sure it is lump free. It's going to take a few minutes, but that's what it is. So I just deliberately didn't do this behind camera because I wanted you to see the exact way I achieve it. So I don't hold back anything. So I think we're fine now. The color is already activated and then I would go ahead to start up with the mixing process. So I go in with the sugar, the granulated sugar all at once, go in with that. Go in with the vegetable oil, all in one single stretch, okay. I remember to get my palette knife so and then at this point you're going to first incorporate the sugar and the vegetable oil together for a few seconds before you go ahead to add up the eggs so we have that coming on so that's okay so the next thing I'll be adding will be the eggs. I'll add this in about two additions, depending on the volume you intend making, but because it's not so much, so I'll just add this in two additions to make sure it's all well blended in. And I go in with the first addition. Just let it blend in briefly. And then just before it's all blended in, you add up the second addition into it. All right, something like this. And that's it so at this point now i'm going to be going in with the vanilla flavor the vanilla flavor is the flavor that's going to enhance the cake so i'm going in with the vanilla flavor in one single stretch and then i just mix that in very briefly as well next thing i'm going in with is the red velvet color base this goes in in a single stretch as well all right and then i blend this in so at this point interestingly the, bat the butter already looks like it's light pink but we are not done so by the time we add up all these ones you know it just gets the actual red velvet color that we're looking for you know that vibe so it goes in now and then the next thing i'm going to be adding will be the milk in about two additions as well so i go in with it like this You can see how it is changing already. Okay. Good. There you have it. So at this point, before I add up the coffee, what I do is I don't beat in the coffee, I stir it in because I don't want it to get too um, tampered with if there's anything like that. So I always pour the coffee into the bowl of the red and this is just simply because I want to make sure that I get out all the red as much as possible. It's not like anything. And what I do at that point is at the point I'm adding this, that's the same point I'm adding the additional white vinegar. So I'll be pouring this in, but I wouldn't be using the mixer again until I pour the first batch of flour. So this goes in as well, which is the white vinegar. And so because I don't have my spatula in hand, so I just mix this manually. Note that I'm not adding, I'm not turning on the mixer. I'm just trying to manually incorporate it all in and that's it. And then I start adding the dry ingredients in three additions. So this is going to be the first addition. The first addition in no particular order really. Just make sure that it all goes in three times. So I mix this in. Okay, sorry. And the cocoa powder i forgot to add that but it's not too late so what i'm just going to be doing is just to be adding into the remaining ingredients that i have not added so basically i'm going to be using two tablespoons of um the cocoa powder in this recipe and that's that so it's really nothing sift it all in the way i did earlier making sure it's well incorporated and i just go ahead to mix it in this is also going to enhance the color to make it have like that slightly maroon color that it's supposed to have. Okay, so I've added the first batch of dry ingredients. So I'm going to be adding the second batch right now.
and I will say have some left. So we keep going. And then the last batch is going in now. So at this point, what I'm just trying to do is to get everything well incorporated. As you see, look at the vibrant red color it has. And I will be um, turning it up very slightly or briefly to scrape the sides to make sure that every dry part is all well blended in. This is what it looks like. Okay. So give it a very quick mix again for the next like 10 seconds and our butter is ready. So our butter is ready now. So what I will be doing at this point is to get this out. So then I set it aside. And at this time point, and guys, don't forget to preheat your oven to the gas mark of 180 degrees before you start up this process because basically the process is very straightforward. What takes a bit of time is how you measure it out. But once you are done measuring, what you need to do is make sure you preheat your oven because your oven has to have a considerable amount of heat trapped in before you pop your cake in to ensure that it gets that initial rise in it without having a dense result or a result that is not desirable so the pans have been prepared prior to time i necessarily don't always line my pans when it's my oil based cakes as long as i oil with the butter and then dust off with flour so these are the two pans i'm going to be distributing the butter into so this is a very ideal measurement or quantity if you want to work with slices or if you want to work with you know layered cakes you're conveniently going to have two quite cakes, um, cake pans from um, this butter so this is what the result looks like if you see closely you see that we have no lumps inside of it we have nothing inside it is well smooth and well mixed in and now I'll be pouring this in ideally if I were to bake this for my clients I always scale my cake butters to make sure they are very adequate so I know that from experience from previous experience this one pan takes about 1100 grams and this pan takes the same quantity so I'm just gonna be eyeballing today all right because it's just for teaching purposes and I would make sure that it's as evenly distributed as possible so this is it right here okay and then I will be repeating the process with the second one okay and I think we're good like this and yes I would be making a, a sample um, a sample bit that will show you what the result is like once it's ready. So this looks very equal. So what you need to do is tap this gently in the center point of the table about two times and this one as well to make sure that you get rid of every trapped air pocket in it so that you don't have pebbles or holes in your cake when you cut through it when it's baked. So this is ready to be popped into the oven now. I'm going to be going behind the camera now to get um something to use to bake up this to show you as a sample so this is the um the test dose pan that i'm going to be using to show you all what the result looks like so i'm just going to be throwing in the remaining bit of the butter into it i'm not going to be pouring this to be filled up because you always have to leave room for the rising of the cake remember it has raisin agents inside of it so um halfway through is just fine okay so that's what we're doing now and don't forget and again just pop this gently to make sure that every air pocket is trapped in so i'll be popping this into the oven and then i'll be right back to show you the results in a few minutes it bakes for approximately 45 to 50 minutes depending on your heat intensity but don't forget that you put it on the mark of 180 degrees or the gas mark of four in your oven i go i'm going so we're back to working with the cheese layer now so you can see that this one is weighing about 330 grams that's not significant so i'm going to be turning it back to the mark of zero because i want it back on zero i'll be mixing all the ingredients into it. it's basically like a throw it all in technique the only thing that you're going to be adding at the very end is going to be the eggs 
you know whilst it is still rolling so the first thing i'm going to be doing now is to be preparing the sour milk now there are two types of sour milk i'm making the cold based sour milk today and that's simply and the substitute by the way because i don't have that in ha on hand so i'm just going to be using a good heavy cream i'm not really permitted to mention brands but i always make sure that it's always written whipping cream on the pack and you have to check out for the mark where it's right 35 percent and, and above for the fat content so the higher your fat content the more expensive this creams are but the higher the fat content the more effective they are this is about 37 percent fat content so the activating ingredient that's going to turn it into sour cream will now be freshly squeezed um, lemon juice from this lemon juice all right and that's to give it an extra tangy taste because it's cheesecake so it's not all cheesy and stuff so and then you're going to be adding a bit of salt of course to enhance the taste as well this is the only bit of salt that goes in into it so in simple terms i'm going to be taking um i'm going to be preparing this first of all so that it's going to rest for about two minutes before i use it that's why once i mix this i then go ahead to mix, measure out the cheese and everything that i need everything all pre-measured by the way so and while we're talking about lemon zest this is basically what it means getting the skin of a fresh lemon like this with your grater the fine and um, the fine um feature of your regular manual grater for it to be this way all right to save us time i had to do that behind camera so now we're going to be preparing the sour cream and so basically i'm going to be using three over four cups of sour cream you can make sure before you use this shake it well to make sure it's all blended in it's supposed to come in a thick liquid form all right so the presence of the lemon juice is going to actually thicken it slightly so that's the activation process so this is the first cup i'm going three times three over four so this is the first one this is the second one and this right here is the third one so i'm going to be doing that and then the next thing is i'm just going to use my spatula to just clean it out to make sure that everything is all into the bowl and then i just simply add up my freshly squeezed lemon juice into it in one single sweep and i just use my manual spatula to just give it a quick whisk so it gets slightly thickened as you see if you notice that it was a bit runny but now it's slightly thickened see slightly thickened and then after doing that I then just go ahead to add up the salt into it and give that just a very simple you know mix and we have our cold based sour cream substitute substitute ready sorry so at this point i'm just going ahead to finish the part the remaining part of the video so i set this aside for now i set this aside and i'm going to be teaching you something very valuable in this particular video this is the caster sugar that is going in the same one we use for the cookie base is going into the butter so i'm going to be teaching you one very valuable lesson in this particular class for the cheesecake basically when i'm working with my cake slices like red velvet cake or like red velvet cheesecake recipes as i'm showing you to the end of this video i always work with only the cheese layer for the cake this is for ease of cutting through number one so when you want to make sure that you have the crust you know something to represent the crust in your cake slice you just add up the crust or some cookies like lotus cookies for instance on the surface of the um, cheese layer when you are sandwiching it together you would understand better when we get to that practical aspect but i'm just telling you that for the purpose of this video i'm going to be working with just the cheese layer okay so for the cheese layer we're going to be working with cream cheese okay so all at room temperature so i'm going to be going in with um 460 grams 460 grams of cream cheese so i'm going to be pouring that in so you can watch through the scale okay so that's 500 and stuff already so i would be extracting the excess we're working with 460 all right close 460 okay thank you almost there just take a little bit more out okay good so we have 460 grams of unflavored cream cheese set this aside for later use and the next thing that i'll be going in will be 
um, three over four cups of the caster sugar that I talked about the last time. Okay, so this is the first one. It goes in, not necessarily for the grams, but then just to show you two. And then this is the third one. It goes in. And then the next thing will be the prepared heavy um, sour cream goes in as well so like i said earlier it's just basically a throw it all in technique the only thing i would even be putting at the beginning part is going to be the eggs three eggs and you have to use either a food processor or something like this like a blender with very high function for you to get it to be smooth and just the way it's supposed to be you can hand mix it and you cannot use a mixer because a mixer contains a bitter and that's not going to be so you're supposed to process it like pulse it so the pressure is going to come from underneath not from the pressure you add using your hand mixer or your stand mixer so the next thing i will be adding will be the vanilla flavor and that's one teaspoon of vanilla flavor i'll go ahead to add one teaspoon of freshly grated lemon skin which is also known as lemon zest i pour that in as well and that's basically it we're not adding any salt so the next thing i'm going to be adding now is going to be one over eight cup that's the smallest measuring cup of all-purpose flour and that is because we are not we are not working with the cookie base in this particular recipe and that's because um, if it's a slice it's always nice to be all smooth you can just add some crumbs so for you to have some proper structure note that if you're working with the cookie base and the cheesecake variant that has the cookie base the cookie base also already serves as a support to the cheese layer okay so because we are working with the cheese layer directly here we have to add up some um some flour to aid the um the, the whatever the structure of the butter at the end of the day so that it's not too fragile to break into pieces or break into two so i'm going to be adding that quantity of flour just for the purpose of it it is going to be without the cookie base so that's it now i just basically cover this up and put it in my my processor and then just pulse this till it's very smooth <laughs> So, to hasten the process, I will just be using this to throw it, okay? All right. If you have watched me up until this point, let me know in the comment box by typing cheesecake. So we go on now. So at this point, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. Super smooth, all right? But of course, it's still too thick. And so you'd see the at the instant I add up the eggs, it's just gonna transform immediately to the perfect consistency it is supposed to have. So um, I'm gonna be adding the eggs now, but I'm gonna be covering this to ensure that it doesn't splash or anything. So what I will do now is to just pour a little at the time. I'm gonna start with this again. And then I add the eggs. You basically mix this until it's just combined, not over mix or anything. We are done with it now. And our cheese butter is ready. So um, this is what it's, it looks like. So we just see. Can you see the dramatic transformation just by adding the eggs? And we're going to be going ahead at this point to pour it into the prepared pan that I have for the cheese layer only. When you're working with your cheese layer only, you're just basically going to be working with prepared pans like this, just the way I prepared for the red velvet, but this time around with the parchment paper inside of it. So we're just going to be pouring all of this into the pan like this. All right, that's it. And then we're going to be baking this in the same preheated oven mark of 180 degrees but this time around we're gonna be sitting 
a pan a bigger pan with some water and underneath of the cake layer so that the heat that's more like you're going to be baking it in a warm bath so you know when you put the the, the, the pan with the water and the bottom part of the oven is going to aid the process of the cheesecake so that it's the, the heat temperature inside of the oven is not going to be too intense so that you don't have cracks in your cheesecake all right so the water bath is going to like moisturize or give adequate moisture to the atmosphere in the oven so we're going to be popping this into the oven very briefly and I will be back in about 35 minutes when it is ready and then we can go on with how to sandwich it all together thanks for staying with me now we get to the interesting part which is the cake slice um, version of this video now very quickly these are the cakes I baked but you notice that I, I waited about a few hours before I can work on this cake because definitely it's a cheese layer so I waited about 4 hours and now it's actually chilled to perfection and this also has been chilled to perfection once you pop your red velvet in the in the freezer for a bit it's you know it darkens in color and that's why it's like this and we're going straight into the, into the process of um, making the, the red velvet cheesecake so for this video for this part of the video you are going to be needing two two um, boards the one you're going to be working on the cake with and the one you're going to be using to slice the cakes you know I'm going to be teaching you how to get your perfect razor sharp cut. so you're going to be needing a long serrated knife as this of course you're going to be needing your spatula your and your palette knife to spread the cream okay so the first thing is you are going to be needing a super stable whipped cream for this cake slice why because that's what's going to hold it together and i already have loads of videos in my thread showing how to achieve the perfect whipped cream stability check 100 percent and all that so i'll be using my recipe for or stable whipped cream in this video as seen here see how stable it is freshly whipped and of course the cakes are ready so the first thing i'm going to be using is the board already cleaned out and I would start up with the uh, which one I'll start up with this one for every time I bake up a cake I always make sure that I trim the bottom sides not necessarily because of anything where I just try to make sure that all of those you know dry patches that come from the oiling of the pan with the flour and everything don't necessarily have to get in into the cake so I'm just trying to do that now doing that okay and This is going to serve as the bottom side of the cake slice so make sure that you take out all these crumbs every time it comes out so i'm going to turn this right back to sit like this okay so this part of the cake that has like an indentation i don't have any problems with it all i'm going to do is just to try and level it out this is one thing i do with even my full cakes i don't typically trash my cakes all right so that's why some people call me the cake surgeon because I always find a way around it. So, see so what I am doing here. But if you don't have any reasons to do this, I'm particularly happy this is even happening. I mean, so that you can see how to go about it if you have like a slightly um, dented part of cake. You don't need to panic. So, all I do is I trim and then I add it right back. And you don't need to worry about what it is going to look like when you cut it up. It's going to be perfect nothing is going to show it's not going to show in the results in any way possible so this is going to serve as the first layer and then i just simply get some of the cream and put it at the center so aside from me teaching you how to sandwich it all together the main focus of this video is how to cut it in the typical way i always cut mine very razor sharp and neat all right almost looks unreal but it just takes constant practice this is actually a seven inches square cake and it will cut six convenient slices when we are done all right so this is the first layer now so what i am going to be doing before i add the second layer is to get some bits of cookie base give this you know why i'm doing this i'm doing this to just add some extra crunch you know how typical it is for cheesecakes to have a crust and because we didn't bake the crust together with the 
um, the cheese there we're trying to have something that is close to that so that when you taste it you still feel some kind of texture in the cake right so I hope that makes sense so we'll just do this for the next few seconds and I'll just go ahead to add up some extra cream just very lightly and that is just to make sure it holds in place because I can't put that directly on the cheese there so it doesn't slide off see what I'm doing see just to give the binding effect so for the cheese layer I'm not going to be trimming the bottom side remember it is quite delicate all right this is what it looks like no bone size so it looks like so I'm just going to be placing this directly over the first layer then press it in very firmly to make sure it's well you know well sandwiched together so I'll then go ahead to you know cut off all of these indented parts so I don't have to pack on too much cream in as much as we're trying to sandwich it we're trying to make sure that you are eating more cake than more cream okay so that's what we're doing here so I repeat the process that I had the first time very briefly it goes the second time like this and you're going to be needing a tall table for this really because it makes it easy to spread the cake and makes it easy to navigate around all the angles of the cake so here that's it we have the second layer and remember I'm gonna repeat what I did the first time with this one now this is totally optional guys but then you know how you say if you're gonna be adding this to your own slice you definitely cannot charge the same amount you will charge if you were not adding it because everything that you put in into your cake has to be factored into your costing and pricing okay so for this one now this costs you know this is a luxury cake slice so try to make it as luxury as possible but if you want to make yours affordable you can totally skip this part okay it's not going to reduce the quality neither is it going to reduce the good taste it's going to have all right so it's all depending on you guys so now like i said earlier i'm sandwiching it again like this and we're about 65 percent done yay all right so yeah and so we go in with the final layer now at this point you're going to be needing a lot of tissues or a clean napkin because especially when you need to start cutting the cake you are going to be needing to clean the knife per every sweep so that you can ensure you have clean slices all the time okay so this is what it looks like now okay 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 like i said earlier i have a slight indentation here so i'm just gonna add it and that's because you know because it's 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 a square cake you don't want the angle slopey in any way or hanging or suspended so just make sure you pop it up. At this point now this is going to be going the second time so i always make sure that there's always typically a side that is higher than the other this looks higher so i will just put it like this so the higher part goes over the lower part so something like this and you all can see how it is i'm still going to go ahead to add something here because even though i'm going to trim it out i don't want to cut it in too deep so this is this now so at this point what i am going to go on to do is just to level it out level it out like this level it out right okay to reveal the very yumminess of the cake right just like this all right so there is an interesting part and that part is the fact that i'm not gonna have to trim this cake necessarily because i'm going to fill up all the sides this is all to ensure that it is very well cleanly cut so i'm gonna sandwich all the sides round why why i'm doing that is to make sure that um the what's it called all of the spaces showing out from the cake is well sealed in with the cream because before i can cut the cake i'm gonna have to pop it into the freezer for about 15 minutes or thereabouts to make sure that the cream settles in very well otherwise you're not gonna get i mean you could be able to get clean slices but i mean the chances will be lower 
so see what i am doing now this is the same approach i use when i'm frosting my full cake so this is also a tutorial that comes in handy if you like to know how i frost my cakes so yeah we are going on and on and just repeating the same thing over and over again all right can you see so now this gives it defined edges by the time it sets in the freezer all right and this is the top side just um the cream is stable as you can see that it's not soupy or runny or you know something even as i'm working on it okay so we do this so this serves as the first coating so just before i cut it i'm going to be applying a second coating just on the surface point not around the side the reason why i'm not going to be adding to the second to the side the second time is i'm going to be trimming it off to reveal the you know the real way the cake is going to look when you cut up into sizes but the top side has to look a little more appealing so that's why i'm going to add some cream to the top side of the cake one more time but that's when it has gotten a bit firmed up in the freezer so that's what we have now i'm going to be popping this into the freezer now and i'll be back in about 15 to 20 minutes when i'm ready to teach you how to cut it into a nice rectangle shape so now i'm adding it's been a few minutes so i'm adding the second coating on the top surface as i said earlier so we are just making it you all can see that it looks a lot neater than it was when i just brought it out that's what i'm trying to talk about it just needs to be very appealing even before any client can desire to taste it you know so that's why i'm taking the extra pain to put that final coating on the top surface of the cake all right so we're done now so what i'll be doing next is just to add up some crushed lotus cookies on the top again the way i did in the middle and then just for some extra steam and an appealing result so at this point i just want to clean out all this excess cream on the board using like i said earlier either a kitchen towel that is clean or tissue very okay here okay so. so after this now remember i said earlier that this is a six inches size of um a square pan so obviously i'm going to get six convenient slices out of this cake so what i am going to do is to look at the side that has a longer part which end up in here so if you are not very good with eyeballing your measurements what you are trying to do is to make sure that each side is about three inches right so you have to make sure that once you partition it it's about three inches so now i'm going to go ahead to trim the sides like i already said so for everyone i cut i make sure i clean off the excess cream on the knife so that it doesn't go back onto the cream now look at what it looks like so i'm repeating the process all four times cut it carefully gently remember that as i'm doing this i'm not cutting it with too much so it's not like a significant number okay so that's the second part going with the third time again all right basically repeat it all four times Get another tissue again just to make sure so before i start cutting up i would clean it one more time because of all the things from the cream okay very briefly So remember i said earlier i said so 
you're trying to make everything equal i'm not going to be using tape measures to eyeball it but for the purpose of the knowledge whatever size you are making just half it okay so this is it now this is the canvas so i just simply need to you know make sure it's about three inches per partition so what i do is have something like this guys okay and then i just go in a single sweep all the way down because i cannot go the way they cut like something else otherwise there will be an interaction between the cream and the cake in the center so all you need to do is try and unfasten it like this and bring it out point i just lift it off the board and i'll put it here and this is where i'll be working on the remaining part of the trimming per length i clean my hand so now it goes like this so i'm going to be cutting this into three equal parts remember i said it cut six let's set this aside first okay aha uh -huh. so we have this now so this is what it looks like see let's try and Get it to be neat, very neat, right? So at this point, now what we're going to be doing now is to now get the sides out. So I'm going to be cutting into three equal sides. So trying to eyeball it, this is the first one. Now this is the second one. Now I'm going to cut. All right, so this is the first one we're going to cut. So the same pattern I used the first time, just simply go with a single sweep all the way down. And then just move it out like this. And there you have it. This is what it looks like. Right. So I'm gonna go further now, I'm not done. Because I intend to get this plated, I'm going to repeat the process anyways, all three times. Oops, that's the second time. Same pattern, down. Move it out. Now this was, this is exactly what it looks like. Okay, and then this is a bit of an excess, but it's not significant to serve two more people so since that side is a bit rough i will just simply cut it out and that's where my staff and everyone around me get to enjoy all right so i'm going to be wrapping this video up once i'm done showing you how to plate this and do the rest behind camera so i'm going to clean this one more time and then the next thing i'm going to be doing is judging by the measurements of the plates i am going to be using I have to make sure that it's the same size, not too loose so it doesn't slide off and not too large so that it can fit in just perfectly. So what I'm going to be doing now is now to further give it a, a clean sweep again with the knife like this. All right, like this. Clean it one more time. I repeat the process with the second side too. And that's how you achieve the razor cut, the razor sharp cut for the cake slice. All right, okay. So you just go ahead to take it now and lift it very carefully into the plate as seen. And it's actually the exact size by measurement. And then you just go ahead to add your cutlery as the case may be definitely some of these plates come with cutlery some do not but this comes with cutlery put it in place and then you get the cover all well cleaned and you cover it very nicely and guys your cake slice is ready okay so let's do a taste test to know if what we have here is amazing um okay Mm. I 
actually like the two blends of flavors and it is totally amazing so guys that's going to be all for the class i hope you found it very empowering i hope you found it very educative and i hope you're going to be trying this out and introducing it to your clients in the nearest future if you found this video very helpful do give me a thumbs up and drop your feedback your reviews and your questions in the comment box and i will do the best i can to respond to them as soon as I can. If you like more content like this, let me also know in the comments and I will attend to it as soon as I can also. Till next time, I remain your favorite baker girl, Femi's Desert Bill. Bye.